a manufacturer rule. There's like a law uh -huh. that is like the reason the cameras can't record for that long. Oh, uh, because really? Because then they would be classified as video cameras, which there's different legislation around. It's super weird. Laws, politics, cameras, damn it. Hey everyone, what's happening? I am joined here today by my friend Jarvis. Hi. <laughs> Um, Jarvis, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Jarvis. I work with Myco. Um, I'm a software engineer and I also make YouTube videos. So today we're going to answer your questions that you've asked me via Twitter and on YouTube. And uh, yeah, so we can just kind of jump into it. Uh, can you give us some general tips on how to prepare for coding interviews? Thanks. My advice on preparing is educate yourself on the format of the interview. I think that a ton of companies do it very similarly, and there are a lot of really good strategies that work for every type of company. Like one is thinking out loud, because mm -hmm. the goal of the interviewer is to assess how you, your thought process and like how you approach solving problems. I would almost say, yeah, like coding interviews are meant to sh like reveal thought process more than it is to like find that final solution. Yeah, because even if you get the right answer, if you don't show your work, so to speak, mm -hmm. it's it's really hard to know if, if this person would be a person that you'd want to work with. And like to practice the whole talking out loud thing, like what I do when I'm preparing for interviews is that I'll take like a question out of that book and then sit with someone and mm -hmm. go through it so that they can make sure that if I'm speaking out loud and yeah. stuff like that. And, so, um, yeah. and there's actually been a lot of literature on this. There's a great book for preparing. Link in the doobly doo doo. <laughs> Kizia asks, how many languages do we need to know? I think that a lot of people stress out about knowing mm. a bunch of languages. Yeah. You don't need to know that many languages to be a successful software engineer. What is important to know is these basic concepts that are expressed by the language. Java is an object-oriented language. Most things about that language are object-oriented. When you take an object-oriented programming class, you learn about those sorts of paradigms, mm. and then like put those in your back pocket. Now, any object-oriented language, you pick up C Sharp or something, and you basically know how it work and the syntax is something that anyone should be able to pick up because mm -hmm. the language is not the important part it's about solving problems yeah great answer and then the second part yeah the second part um the is it okay to be scared when you don't know what to code i i'm like someone who when there's like a big task in front of me like i have like a big programming project or something i see the whole thing and then i get really intimidated and i kind of just like back away slowly. But one trick that I'm still kind of working on is just to take it one step at a time. And so you kind of have this huge thing in front of you, but okay, let's break that down into what that actually means into smaller tasks. And then that into even smaller tasks. So then you kind of have like a very well-defined list of small things to do, which amount to the big thing. So then you don't feel as overwhelmed or scared to do the thing. And it becomes kind of like, okay, there's one foot after another. And next thing you know, you're kind of like already started and you're kind of driving and coding. And if you're in like a class or something and you're assigned a project and you just don't really know where to start, it's like it's like okay to ask your peers, it's okay to ask your TA, like you know sometimes you need to be shown the ropes a little bit mm -hmm. in order to know like exactly where to start and that that's okay. I was wondering what do you think are the main differences between a software engineer, a web developer, and a computer IT person? Mm. I think this is an important question. I feel like I get this question a lot, so let's break it down. Software engineer, that's what we are. Yeah, that's what we are. Basically, it just means a person who engineers software, which means the planning, development, and execution mm -hmm. of a software project. Mm -hmm. So everything from a, a mobile app, like an iOS app, mm -hmm. to a web application. Yeah, and I feel like software engineer is used interchangeably with software developer. They're really basically synonymous. And then and then a web developer is very similar, I think, to a software engineer, but it is a bit more specific. You might hear the term web engineer as well, and oftentimes this means someone who is comfortable working with web technologies. Mm -hmm. Usually this person knows the whole web stack and is comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. It's like thinking about it as like, a software engineer or a software developer with a web specialty. Mm -hmm. So if you say like iOS engineer, it means like you're a software engineer, but with an iOS specialty. Yeah. So <laughs> IT is a trickier one. IT is has some overlap in the beginning with computer science or software, but there are a lot of differences in the actual job. IT people are usually working with a lot of the devices that are important to making an organization run. If this person doesn't do their job right, the whole organization shuts down and cannot function. All right, next question is from Miguel Acero. 
What tools or side projects do you recommend making or have you enjoyed making? I would say make something that interests you, um, make something that benefits you directly yeah. because I think those are the types of projects that are going to motivate you to actually work on them. Yeah. At the same time, like side projects can easily become like a huge project. Like mm -hmm. say you want to build an app to like track your calories, for instance. Yeah. That can get really complex really, mm -hmm. really quickly. Um, and then it can get kind of like too big or overwhelming. A piece of advice that I have for like side projects is like make them small. Uh, make them like accomplishable uh, within like a couple months or maybe like even yeah. less than a month. Just remember that you're doing it for fun. So yeah. when, you, when you aren't having fun anymore, it's okay to not do it anymore. <laughs> Life's too short to not have fun. There we go. Yeah. All right. Our friend Derek Reynolds asks, what's the most difficult conversation you've had in your professional career? Oh. Derek, you're asking the hard questions. Yes. So I think that the concept of difficult conversations is like very real. Conversations are hard, feelings are involved. You want to just communicate the best you can while keeping everyone's feelings intact because you never want to make anybody feel bad. For me, the most difficult conversation I had was actually with my last boss leaving my last job. It was you know, something I thought about long and hard for a while. And then when it came to it, came time to like call them into a conference room and like deliver the news. It was very difficult and I felt like I had to defend my decision. Mm -hmm. Luckily they were pretty receptive to it and understanding and didn't think I was like making a mistake with my life or anything <laughs> like that. But yeah, like getting over that hill was like pretty, pretty tough. So the most difficult conversation that I've had in my professional career is probably the first time that I delivered like critical feedback to a coworker. Mm -hmm. One thing that I didn't really realize coming into a software engineering job out of college was how important managing your relationship would be with other people. You're working close to 40 hours with these people and so it's a given that you're gonna have little riffs and tiffs and yeah. you're not gonna see eye to eye on everything. Um, a lot of the times it's like miscommunication and, and like misunderstanding. Totally. So yeah, my last job there was someone who I didn't really get along well with and I couldn't really understand what their intentions were for what they were saying. So yeah, I talked to my manager and he gave me a couple tips on like how to approach the situation. And then yeah, we just kind of talked it out and we realized it was a misunderstanding and I felt so much better after talking yeah. about it, but it was so hard to like do that because yeah. I was like I have to talk about my feelings to a coworker. Oh, totally, yeah. And yeah, I almost cried. I wanted to touch on something that you said, mm -hmm. which is that you spend a lot of time with these other people and your relationships with them are very important. Mm -hmm. Software engineering is not about going into a cave for 40 hours a week and writing code as like one single person. It's all about teamwork mm -hmm. and planning mm -hmm. and relationship building. Mm -hmm. That's most of the job, to be honest. Like I, if you ask me like how much of my day I spend writing code, it's like some days it could be zero percent and other days maybe it's 50 percent but still like there's a lot of facets to the job software engineering is fun yeah. <laughs> all right thank you so much to everyone for all of your questions this was really fun this was so fun yeah we should do more q a yeah jarvis where can everyone find you you can find me at youtube.com slash jarvis johnson i'm sure there's like going to be a link or something somewhere uh and uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Jarvis, where you can read really bad jokes. <laughs> this has been pretty serious stuff, so we're gonna go over to my channel and do a video where we do YouTube challenges. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. <laughs> also, oh. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'm gonna drink some water. <laughs>